Hey guys, this is Andrew Pearl out with rawfoodhealth.net and today I want to talk about choline. So if you're a nutrition geek like me, you've probably heard about it's this nutrient which the nutritional community is really just getting a handle on. Uh, we're learning more and more that it's essential for a lot of functions in the body and if you're a vegan or a raw foodist, you have probably heard that, oh, it's really hard to get your choline. And if you haven't heard it, you're going to hear it in the future, I guarantee. So it's gonna be like, well, maybe you need to supplement, or maybe, you know, you need to put some eggs in your diet. Um, so uh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about where the recommendations for choline intake come from. What are the ramifications for not getting enough choline, and how you can meet your choline requirements on a vegan diet or a raw food diet. Humans have an absolute need for choline, and in fact, if you grow human cells in a petri dish but withhold it, they will end up dying. Researchers figured this out in 1955, but it wasn't until the mid-90s that we really started to understand some of the other critical functions that it performs. Choline is used to synthesize the neurotransmitter acetylcholine and that is really important because it plays a pretty huge role in brain function. Whether you walk or run or blink or speak you are indirectly using something drawing on choline. It plays a critical role in clearing fat out of the liver and if you give someone an insufficient amount of choline they actually get fatty liver. So I could go on about this, but really the take-home point is when people tell you you need choline, they're not joking. You really do need it. In 1998, the Institute of Medicine declared that choline was indeed an essential nutrient that we needed to be getting through our diets. And they decided that they couldn't set a recommended daily allowance based on the available data. They just didn't have enough studies. So instead, they decided to, to set what they call adequate intake and they did it based on just a single study. The study they drew on put people on a diet that contained just 50 milligrams of choline and they did this for six weeks and at the end pretty much everyone on the study had developed a fatty liver, various levels of liver dysfunction, and also signs of muscle deterioration. On the other hand, the people who were put on a higher level of choline, notably 550 milligrams per day for men and 425 for women, did not develop any of these symptoms. And thus, the dietary reference intake was born. And you have this nice handy chart that you see here. And if you look at these numbers, you might say, well, you know, if you know anything about choline and how it's present in food, you're going to have a hard time getting enough if you're eating a vegan diet. But before we go any farther, I just want to note that we really don't know exactly how much choline we need. I've looked at a number of studies examining its role in, for instance, cancer and heart disease, and I think it's likely that in about a decade they'll update this to somewhere in the range of 300 to 400, which is a much easier to hit target. But uh, for the time being, let's just go with the assumption that they're right and we really need this much. If you take a look at the foods that are highest in choline, they are almost all animal products. And eggs take the cake, and they're probably the richest source of choline. But of course, as we know, there are a number of downsides to the consumption of animal products. Uh, these are polluted foods outside of whatever nutritional ramifications they may have. Just not smart choices. So I designed what I think is a fairly reasonable cooked vegan diet that is low fat, the kind of thing that someone who's trying to eat healthy on a vegan diet might attempt to eat. It's kind of similar to what I ate years ago when I ate a cooked vegan diet. So um, for instance, a big bowl of oatmeal with a cup of sliced strawberries on top for breakfast, for lunch, brown rice, and uh, a cup of red kidney beans. For dinner, three potatoes, and some okra and some asparagus and an apple for dessert. Note that this menu contains no oil or other empty calories that would have provided no choline but wasted a lot of the um, calories of the diet. Most vegans probably do make that mistake and waste a lot of their potential nutrient intake.
this diet provides just 55% of the choline that the RDI suggests is necessary. So let's say we have the same guy who needs the same 2,500 calories a day to maintain his weight, but this time he wants to do it on a raw diet. How is he going to try to hit his choline intake? Well, if you look at this list of vegetables, the cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower, mushrooms, and leafy green vegetables lead the list. But realistically, you can't eat this and eat enough calories. You just can't stuff yourself enough to get enough from these foods. So you actually really need to rely on fruit for most of your choline intake, even though it isn't the highest source. Clementines, tangerines, various types of melons like cantaloupes all have a reasonable amount of choline in them. So just for the sake of argument, not that I'm recommending this diet for anyone, but let's see if we just make up a diet of clementines for a day, will you get enough choline? And the answer is yes, 136% of the RDI, that's pretty good. But is that a realistic diet? No, it's not, and it would be viewed efficient over the long run in a number of other nutrients. So let's talk about a more reasonable raw food diet. So same imaginary guy, same caloric intake, but this time he's going to be eating a raw food diet. So he starts off the day with three cantaloupes for breakfast. For lunch, he goes with a smoothie made up of eight bananas, a cup of raspberries, and some spinach. And then for dinner, he starts off with tangerines, and he moves on to a salad of a pound of leafy green romaine lettuce, half an avocado, some white mushrooms, and some tomatoes. What do you think? Is he going to get it? Nope, he misses. He only gets 89% of his needed choline intake. Still a lot better than the grain-based vegan diet, certainly, but still short of what they're recommending. My point is here that you can tweak a vegan diet to meet the requirements, but frankly, I think that most people will miss it on most, day, most days, even if they're eating really healthy. But search through the scientific literature as I have. See if you can find a single instance, a single study that has pointed out people getting deficiencies or an increased risk of disease at intakes above 300. And I think you won't find any. I haven't. As I said earlier, I believe that the RDI is going to be revised downward relatively soon as more data becomes available. Until then, I have absolutely no fear about eating a nutrient-rich, low-fat, raw vegan diet. Even the grain-based vegan diet, though I wouldn't consider it healthy necessarily, is probably going to meet your requirements for choline. If you've got more questions about meeting your nutritional requirements on a low-fat, raw vegan diet, check out this page at rawfoodhealth.net. I think it'll answer a lot of your questions about nutrients that you get from food. If you're looking to thrive on a diet that is supported by science and is going to really just turn your life around, make you feel amazing, and help you lose weight, check out Raw Food Weight Loss and Vitality. You can see the link in the corner. Um, subscribe to my newsletter. That's the one on the bottom right. And you can subscribe to this channel in the upper left if you want to see more awesome videos like this.